Well, it's time for another tutorial on silicone and coloring silicone to mimic flesh tones. Now, overall, this is a pretty straightforward, simple process, but I thought it was time for a good uh, recap on some of the new, using some of the new silicone formulas. And of course, with Halloween right around the corner, a lot of you are already prepping and building Halloween props and casting prosthetics and that sort of thing. So great time to revisit some of the basics on coloring silicone. Now, quick word before we jump right into it here, um, to get the most realistic flesh tone, the best way to achieve that is through a combination of both silicone pigment, which is a paste pigment or a really thick liquid pigment, and then flocking. And those two things in concert is what gives us a very realistic flesh tone. And it's, sometimes we'll get people really confused about, well, which is better? Should I use flocking or should I use silicone? And it's really not an either or. If you're making realistic silicone props or medical simulators or something like that that you want to have as realistic of a skin as possible, really both used together is what's going to get the best results. And here's the reason for that, is silicone pigment by itself goes into suspension and just dissolves into the silicone, which gives you a, a very homogeneous, even color. But that doesn't mimic organic tissue very accurately in the sense that nobody has just one flesh tone across their hand or they'd look like a Barbie doll. So what adds to that is putting in flocking colors. So mixing in the flocking colors, which are little microfibers, when you put those in, since they don't dissolve, they maintain their independence as little dots of color. So what that does is it means that your eye actually does a lot of the color mixing uh, when you're looking at just like it does when you're looking at real organic tissue when you look at your hand you see a lot of different colors if you really focus on the palm of your hand so to mimic that in silicone we use a base pigment but then we also use a, a variety of flocking colors mixed into that because again those aren't mixing together to create a new color they're actually little independent dots of color which again gives you that very realistic skin tone look so without further ado, we're going to get started. We're using the uh, 0050 silicone, which again, that falls on the very low end of the A scale uh, that kind of crosses over into the 00 scale. Now for these test parts, I'm just going to pour up an ear in one of our little resin molds and a little belly button in another one of our resin molds. And this is a good idea, a good practice, if you are doing any of this kind of work in silicone, making any kind of silicone medical simulators or props or whatever, really helps to have some resin molds like this of just some uh, general parts of the body. Ears are really good, noses, things like that. Uh, we chose a belly button for this for some uh, other tests we'll be showing in some, some uh, future videos. Now, 0050 silicone is measured one-to-one -one by weight. I haven't tried it by volume. It looks like it's about the same specific gravity for the two components, but uh, always the most accurate way to measure a silicone like this is going to be by weight. And here, I'm just going to measure out uh, about 200 grams of A and 200 grams of B. And it does take some getting used to pouring silicones like this because they're, they can be fairly thick or thicker than uh, household materials you might be used to pouring. So it does take some getting used to uh, stopping that pour just in time. Now, the 0050 has a working time of about 30 minutes, so we have more than enough time to get this pigmented to our liking. But if you are new to working with silicones, or you're doing a large project, it does help to go ahead and measure out your parts A and B in separate buckets and pigment those independent of each other to the same color. And that way when they're combined, they make the same color every single time. So if you're casting up a large body or a head or something where you're using multiple batches of silicone, that really helps match everything, keep everything consistent across multiple batches. Now we're going to use some of our just medium flesh tone, our silicone flesh tone here. And this is a, a pretty thick paste pigment. 
And I'm going to grab for that batch, I'm going to grab a glob about the size of a pea there. You can see. And this by itself, this is a really nice medium flesh tone. We have a lot of people use this for medical simulators and, and uh, you know, as a base color for a lot of prosthetic and mask work. And a lot of our uh, silicone doll making customers use a lot of this pigment for their dolls because, again, even if this isn't the color you're shooting for, this is a great jumping off point. So that's what we have right there. And you see that, that so that pea-sized glob to about, uh, you know, 400 grams gives us that just enough translucency for realism, but not so much that it looks too waxy. Now, here's what I, these are some of the main colors I use for pigmenting silicone. I use the tan to darken it a little bit. And obviously you can see from the level of this, the flesh tone, this is just a medium flesh tone silicone pigment and I use a lot of this one. And then the red, those are probably the most popular colors that we have for this. And the red really adds that nice vascular quality to your cast silicone. Now, adding a little bit of green can push this over to more of an olive tone. So we're gonna add just a little bit of that. And then we have yellow and pink. And this is where it really helps to have a color wheel so you can play around with what different colors are going to do when they're mixed in there. But that's what we're mainly going to use for this is, is this a little bit of green to push that over into an olive flesh tone, but mainly that uh, red and the flesh and the tan. Now a word about pigmenting silicone, especially if you're doing this for prosthetic work or uh, to simulate a body part or anything like that, and you're going to be painting this, and you want it to be as accurate as possible. What I recommend doing is finding the lightest flesh tone on your subject, like the inside of the wrist, is an excellent area to match. Now, we're not matching that for this video, but great, great place to look on your subject, because when you go to paint your finished silicone part, you can always make it darker, but you can't make it lighter. So, real important to be aware of that. Now I'm going to subject this to a vacuum. We're going to vacuum degas this. Again, we have plenty of working time, so we have more than enough time to, to take all the, the right precautions to get a nice, dense, bubble-free silicone. And there's the viscosity. Like I said, overall this is a, a relatively low viscosity for this type of silicone, but still a good idea to vacuum degas this. Now one last word about our resin molds. Anytime you're spraying release agent into a mold like this, make sure you give it time to off gas and give up any of those propellants or solvents in those release agents. Because if you spray that down really good and then immediately pour your silicone, you'll wind up with a bunch of pinhole bubbles and a lot of defects in your casts. Okay, now we have our skin samples poured, and remember our demold time for this product is around six hours at room temperature. So it'll be faster if it's warmer, slower if it's colder, but be aware of that. You don't wanna to try to rush that if, it's, if you're working in a cooler area. So here in Texas in the summertime, that can get a little tricky because it might be really hot outside, but you might have the AC on full blast. So be aware of that. If you want to accelerate your silicone chunks, you can always just put those out in a, uh, a hot car. I usually let them gel at room temperature and then move them out to a hot car because that's like an autoclave. It'll set this stuff up almost instantly. Well, it's been about five hours since I cast my original little skin chunks. So let's check them out and I'm going to try to get some good close-ups so you can see what that looks like with uh, the flocking and the silicone pigment combined. 
Now what I like to do with parts like this, casting in a resin mold, is use a blunt tool like one of these little wooden sculpting tools. These are excellent for working up an edge and peeling that out without harming the mold. But there you see our, our first little belly button cast. And of course our ear. And this is, a, this is a cast that was done with, uh, with white as a base instead of the flesh pigment. And the advantage to that is if you're doing fair skin tone, like again, if I'm trying to match this, this inside of my wrist, then I could do that better if I start with white silicone pigment rather than that flesh tone. And in the white, you can really see that uh, much more realistic flesh tone in there with those flocking colors really showing up there. Now, it's a little tricky to tell because of the, the lighting here. You almost have to really be up on this in person to see the difference. But this is a, uh, a little belly button cast with just silicone pigment. And this is the same silicone pigment as a base, but with the flocking added. And you can see a little bit better there. And I, I don't know how well this is going to pick up on the camera, um, but I'll see if I can maybe take a, a still shot of this outside as well. But uh, the, it's a subtle difference, but if you're seeing it here in person or if with a really good high-definition camera, you can see that much more realistic modeled look. Now, where it really is apparent is with, uh, with this piece where we use the white as a background. When we start with the white, you can really see that, those little bits of the red flocking and things like that. And again, the whole point of this is to allow your eye to do the color mixing just like it does when you're encountering real organic tissue. Now, many of you might be wondering why we're casting up a bunch of uh, little belly button chunks. And this is for a very special uh, tutorial we'll be posting in the next couple of days. We're going to be making a special field trip for an on-location tutorial, so be sure to stay tuned for that. And uh, big thanks to Danny, a uh, model in several of our previous videos, that uh, donated her belly button to this cause. So uh, that said, uh, hopefully this answers some of the questions we've been getting about uh, flocking and silicone pigment and how those two work together. Uh, in my opinion, that those two in concert are what give you the most realistic flesh tone. Again, important techniques for coloring silicone simulators, but uh, really more importantly for the effects world and the doll making world where those really high realism skins are important. Uh, casting silicone dolls and masks and props and things like that, having that really good base intrinsic color just really makes your painting work that much easier later on. So uh, that said, stay tuned for more exciting videos and I've put just enough mystery out there. Be watching for that next tutorial we'll be releasing in a few days. So uh, lots of good information in that one coming up as well. And as always, I'll be putting links to all the products we used in the video description. And of course, all of our products are available on our website at brickintheyard.com. So be sure to check that out as well. And we have a lot more video content much better organized on our website. So I'll put a link to the video library down there as well. And as always, thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, be sure to click the like button and subscribe and of course the little bell icon so you get notified when we put out new content. And last but not least, uh, we've been with some of our little field trips and mold making expeditions, I've been uh, posting a lot more on Instagram lately. So be sure to check us out on Instagram if you haven't already at, at Biddy Mold Supply.